Welcome to this video on five number summaries and box plots. In this video, you will learn how to construct a five number summary from a set of data. You will learn how to construct a box plot from a five number summary. Please note that this video does not teach you how to construct a modified box plot. Please watch the next video in the sequence to learn how to construct a modified box plot. Let's get started. A five number summary consists of a minimum value, Q1, Q2, or the median, Q3, and the maximum value. The five number summary divides the data into four equal groups or bins. The size of each bin may vary. For example, the distance from the minimum to Q1 could be very small, while the distance from Q1 to Q2 could be quite large. However, the five number summary ensures that an equal number of data points are located in each of the four quartiles. For example, let's suppose we had 12 data points. 12 divided by four is three. So that would mean that we would have three data points in each of these four quartiles. So again, the 25% refers not to the range of values, but to the number of data points between or contained in each quartile. Please note that Q1 separates the bottom 25% of the sorted values from the top 75%. Q2, or the median, separates the bottom 50% from the top 50%. Q3 separates the bottom 75% from the top 25%. Here are some steps to finding a five number summary. The first thing you have to do is to arrange the data in order from lowest to highest. Then you can find the minimum and maximum. Next you find the median or Q2, and then you find the middle of the first half of the data, which we call Q1, and then you find the middle of the second half of the data, which we call Q3. Let's do an example to make this more clear. Suppose you take a sample of 10 random friends from your Facebook account and record their ages. The 10 ages you collect are as follows. So think back to the list we just made. What's the first thing we need to do with this set of data? If you want, you can pause the video and say your answer out loud or write it down. If you said the first thing we need to do is to put these values in order, you were correct. Here we have these ages in order from least to greatest. Once we have organized the data, we can then identify the minimum and maximum values with ease. The minimum value, as you can see here, is 19, and the maximum value is 33. Often, we organize our five number summary in a table such as the one shown here. Now we need to identify the median or Q2. One way to do this is by crossing out extreme values until we are left with only one or maybe two values in the center of our data set. In this case, we have two values in the middle of our data set, so we have to find the mean of these two values. We can do this by adding 24 and 25 and dividing by two. We can also actually find the median of these two numbers by asking ourselves what's halfway between 24 and 25. Either way, we find that the median is 24.5. If you would like to see a different way of finding the Q2 or median, please watch the other video I made on measures of center. Now that we've found the minimum, the maximum, and the median, we still need to find Q1 and Q3. Let's start by finding Q1. We do this by treating the bottom half of the data as its own data set, and we find the median of this bottom half of the data. Again, we cross out data points from either end until we arrive at the center of the data. Therefore, Q1 is 22. We repeat this process on the right side of the median to find Q3. This time, we treat the top half of the data as its own data set and find the median of this data set. Again, we cross out points from either end until we arrive at the center data point. We find that Q3 is 27. Now we are done. We have our five number summary. 
In the previous example, we had an even number of data. We had 10 data points. But what if we had an odd number of data points? Let's repeat this process with n equal to 9. So here you can see that we have an odd number of data. I did this by simply eliminating the 10th data point. And again, as you can see, we have nine data points that we're working with this time instead of 10. So let's get started. Again, we've already put these in order from least to greatest. Hopefully you can see that. So we can start by identifying the minimum and maximum values. Here the minimum value is 19 and the maximum value is 30. Again, we need to find the median or Q2. And we can do that by crossing off extreme values until we get to the center. This time, there's only one middle number, and that is the median, or Q2, which in this case is 24. Again, if you would like to see a different way of finding the median, you can watch a video on measures of center. Now that we've found the minimum, the maximum, and Q2, we need to find Q1 and Q3. This is slightly different. In this case, we include Q2 in the bottom half of our data, and again, we cross out values until we get to the center. So we, our Q1 is 22. Again, we repeat this process to find Q3, again, including our median in the top half of our data. Again, we cross out our values, and we find that Q3 is 26. Now that we've found out how to create a five number summary, whether we have even or odd number of data points, we now need to learn how to construct a box plot from a five number summary. I'll be going back to our original five number summary, which we obtained from our 10 value data set. So the first thing we need before we can construct a box plot is that we need a number line. You can just draw this on a piece of paper and it needs to be at least as long as the range of your data. So for example, here you can see that the minimum value is 19 and the maximum value is 33. So my number line needs to at least encompass values from 19 to 33. As you can see here, I've chosen to go a little bit below 19 and a little bit above 33, just so that all of my values are very clearly visible on my number line. Again, this is a personal choice. The next thing we do is we need to draw our minimum and maximum values on the number line, and we re represent these values by using dots. It is common practice to label these values with numbers so that a person reading the box plot does not have to guess exactly where these dots or values are located, especially if they happen to fall in between two tick marks, as often happens. Now we need to represent Q1, Q2, and Q3 as vertical lines on the graph. Again, we label these three values so that no one has to guess exactly what Q1, Q2, and Q3 are. The next thing we do is to connect these three lines with two horizontal lines, forming a box. The last thing we need to do is to connect are two dots to the boxes, or sorry, to the box. These lines are sometimes referred to as whiskers. And that's it. Now you know how to create a five number summary, whether or not you have even or odd number of data points, and you know how to create a box plot.